Now, chances are some of you have at least considered using a high refresh rate monitor. Almost every esports title benefits from screens that go above and beyond the basic 60 hertz that many displays have. And until you try one, you might not actually know what you're missing. Now, I'm one of those people who finds myself fairly sensitive to high refresh rate. I don't personally like 60 FPS panels. As soon as I experienced high refresh rate for the first time, I was hooked. Like me personally, the jump from 60 hertz to 144 hertz was night and day. And you can ask most players, going from 144 hertz back to 60 hertz, it really takes away from the experience. It's like seeing color for the first time. It was absolutely eye-opening and I could never go back. But how much better is a 144, 240, or even 360 hertz monitor? Can they actually help you rank up in your favorite games? And if so, how do you make sure that you're setting it up properly? Alright, I'm sure all of you knew that this episode was coming, but today is the day that I finally get to talk about monitors. And, more specifically, high refresh rate, or so-called gaming monitors. We've also teamed up with our pals from AMD, who have once again helped us by sharing their expertise. Now, depending on what games you play, your refresh rates and frames per second might not actually matter all that much. Like, if you're just a casual gamer who enjoys single-player, story-driven content, then your average 60 hertz display is often just fine. And if you are a console enthusiast, then for a long time, 60 FPS was actually all you could muster. Before the most recent generation of consoles, the PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox Series S and X, they were capping out at, at best 60 Hertz on their displays or maybe even 30, right? So going to PC, you had the advantage of getting these high refresh rate displays. You had the really smooth experience. But if you're like me and countless others in this space, then you definitely take FPS pretty seriously. Now, I'm sure I don't have to tell you, but a vast majority of our audience is obsessed with games like Counter-Strike, Valorant, Siege, and even League of Legends. And all of these games are built around a competitive game mode where you can climb your way up the ranks. And God knows, the gamers who actually care about the games they play and desperately want to improve at them will do just about anything to gain an advantage. And that includes going out and buying a top-of-the-line gaming monitor with settings that most of you probably don't even understand how to use. But let's take a step back for a second. Because before you even go out and buy one of these high refresh rate monitors, you need to make sure that you own a PC that can handle churning out such high FPS. Now, for virtually every game ever made, turning your video settings down as low as possible will help bolster your PC's performance. And if you need help figuring out which settings you should turn off or leave on, make sure to check out our Pro Settings episode from last year. Now, once you've finished optimizing your settings, then you can finally start to decide on a monitor. You know that little FPS ticker in the corner of all your games? Well. Turn it on if you don't see it, because this is the easiest way to help determine what monitor will best suit your needs. Now, if you are able to run your game of choice consistently, and I mean consistently, at above 150 or so FPS, then perhaps a 144 hertz monitor is best for you. But those of you who have powerful rigs, capable of running games in excess of 300 or maybe even 400 frames per second, might want to opt for an even higher refresh rate monitor. Nowadays, 240 hertz and even 360 hertz monitors are becoming increasingly popular. But if your computer can't keep up with your monitor's refresh rate, then please, don't waste your money. Running your game at a consistent FPS is absolutely critical. Don't believe me? Well, here's my boy Robert from AMD to help back me up. You'll want to at least tune the settings such that your frame rate is pretty consistent at whatever refresh rate your monitor is. So you're going to need to look into that. You might have a 60 hertz monitor, 120 hertz, or heck, even like 280 or 300 these days. And you'll want to try to dial in a frame rate in the game that's very close or beyond what your monitor can do. And that means you're always seeing sort of the, the latest, most updated information from the game, which is especially important for games like CSGO or other twitchy shooters. 
Now, if your frame rate is out of sync with your monitor's refresh rate, then you might experience something called screen tearing. And if you think I'm about to explain screen tearing, then you've clearly never watched this show, because that's not gonna happen. This is when Colton comes in and spews nerd stuff at you. And now, the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Presented by AMD. At this point, do I just exist to answer Dimitri's tech questions, watch VTubers and field desperate DMs asking for a virtual Riot-themed gun attachment? Man, I need something to distract me from this existential dread. Oh, right, screen tearing. Before we talk specifically about screen tearing, I want to explain how your monitor actually updates the image on your screen. In old CRT displays, the visual data was translated and sent to a literal ray gun firing an electron beam at a phosphor layer. The gun would move from left to right, top to bottom, one row at a time, creating the image on your display. Modern monitors actually update in a similar way. The data stream from your PC is translated and then the pixels will update in that exact same pattern, left to right, top to bottom. So why is all this important to understand what screen tearing is? Well, if your PC is sending frames out of sync with your monitor's refresh rate, you could be getting a new frame's data in the middle of drawing the previous one, creating a weird horizontal tear in the image. That's the name. There are generally two routes you can go down when trying to fix issues with screen tearing. In one hand, you have tech, and in the other hand, brute force. When it comes to tech, your baseline option is an in-game setting called VSync, which just makes your graphics card wait to send out a new frame until the previous one has already been drawn. The downside to VSync is that it can create a lot of unnecessary input lag. Then in the mid 2010s, we got a much more nuanced solution. AMD's FreeSync technology and Nvidia's equivalent G-Sync allow your computer and monitor to update in, well, sync with each other, which helps eliminate any sort of screen tearing. While this option will keep your visual fidelity without costing you the input latency that VSync has, it isn't necessarily as fast as we can possibly go. For that, we have the other hand, brute force. Many competitive gamers have turned to just pumping out as many frames as possible to ensure that any tearing is on screen for such a short window of time that it's essentially imperceptible to the human eye. This gives you the absolute bleeding edge when it comes to latency at the cost of needing some combination of exceptional hardware and lower in-game settings to reach these frame rates. If you're a relatively casual gamer who just cares about visual fidelity, then a 144Hz monitor with something like FreeSync is probably going to do you just fine. If you're a competitor who wants to be at the absolute top of your game, the well, sky's the limit. Push your frames as high as you possibly can and find that sweet spot between your budget and the refresh rate you want. And that was the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Presented by AMD. So we've already told you that monitors with a higher than 60 hertz refresh rate are just better. But why is that? Like if you're playing a first person shooter, for instance, where will you actually notice the difference? Well, one of the most common places where one's gameplay might improve is with respect to reaction time. On higher refresh rate displays, you are seeing the information sooner. And this is pretty obvious, since your monitor is drawing more new images with less space between each frame. So if you're holding an angle and waiting for your opponent to peek you, then you'll be able to react faster and take your shot. But there does come a point where you might start to see diminishing returns. The number one question I get from literally anyone who's ever used a 144Hz display is whether they should eventually upgrade to a 240 or now even 360Hz monitor. And according to YouTube tech god Linus, it just might not be all that worth it. 60 hertz displays are showing you a new frame about every 16 and a half milliseconds, whereas 120 to 144 hertz, that's a new frame about every seven milliseconds. That means that whatever you're looking at in that comparison is gonna be twice as up to date. Then when we jump from 144 to 240, that only shaves three more milliseconds off. And finally, going from 240 to 360, that's an extra 120 refreshes per second above the existing fastest monitors around for a whopping savings of just 1.4 milliseconds each frame. So the jump from 60 hertz to 144 hertz is very drastic. And once you try it, I think it's fair to say that you will quite literally never be able to go back. 
like me personally, the jump from 60 hertz to 144 hertz was night and day. And you can ask most players, going from 144 hertz back to 60 hertz, it really takes away from the experience. 60 hertz? Um, it just, it's awful, man. It's awful. It's, it's, it, it, it really is a big, once you, once you go to 144 and above, I feel like the difference from 144 to 240 isn't enough to like, like, it, like it's not like a must have, but definitely from 60 to 144 is the biggest thing you'll ever touch in your life. Not even like the refresh. It's just like the input lag is just so noticeable. The just just it, it just makes the game co look completely different. So yeah, no, you, if you don't have a, a 144 hertz, get one ASAP. For those of us who have experienced the beauty of a true high refresh rate masterpiece, 60 hertz just doesn't cut it anymore. Like, don't get me wrong. It can be used to view your Twitch chat or for completing basic tasks but I don't advise playing ranked on one unless you absolutely have to. But beyond 144 hertz, the performance boost just isn't as obvious. The jump to 240 or 360 or even 390 hertz is just a lot less impactful. Hell, some pros like tens have even suggested that 360 hertz just feels kind of weird. So if you're like an actual competitor, is it worth it to dish out the cash for a 360 hertz or even 390 hertz display? Well, to answer that question, we consulted our go-to Valorant streamer, Ethos. The improvement you get uh, decreases the higher you go up, right? So 60 to 144, absolutely worth it. It's a must have. 144 to 240, if you got a little bit more money, um, definitely invest in it. 240 is still definitely a great improvement. As a, it's a lot less noticeable than 144, and for a lot of people, they have mid-tier systems and they can't even maintain above 240. Um, going from 240 to 360 and above, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend. I think if you already have a 240, then just leave it at that. Keep your 240, and then, and that's that. Does a higher refresh rate monitor technically provide faster, more up-to-date visuals? Yes. The real question is whether those improvements are actually perceptible to you and if they'll actually help your gameplay more than, say, spending some extra time practicing. The average gamer might not see the point in pumping extra money into their peripherals, but for the best players in the world, 240 hertz and beyond is definitely becoming the standard. Just like 60 hertz was the norm only a few years ago, 144 and 240 hertz displays are becoming more and more common. And the best part about all of this is that the price of these products has dropped significantly. So maybe it's finally time for you to make the jump to a higher refresh rate. But if you or your wallet is not quite ready to pull the trigger on a new display and you still wanna rank up in your games, then maybe it's just time you hit the practice server. Is it 144, 240, or even 360 degree? I want to say degree. <laughs> so is it actually worth buying a 360 or even 390 degree degree? <laughs> also, we got to get the engineers working on a 390 degree monitor. That sounds pretty dope. That does sound really dope. Ah. Yeah. Not gonna see shit. <laughs> I'm gonna be the worst for performance. I'm literally not gonna know where anybody is. It's gonna be great. Literally spinning in your chair. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's gonna be sick though. And if they'll actually help your gameplay, that was a incredible voice crack. Gameplay 